My name is Mary Maslowski. I'm the vice chair of the um, Community Preservation Committee. I'd like to welcome you all here this evening. This is the uh, Community Preservation Committee meeting for Wednesday, uh, Thursday, July 15th, 2021. It's being held in person, yay, here in the Don B. Griffin Room at Harwich Town Hall at 732 Main Street. Um, before we begin, I would just like to ask that um, and remind everyone that uh, if you are choosing to record or video this meeting to uh, let the chair know at this time. And hearing none, uh, Channel 18 will be filming the meeting this evening. So I'd like to first just start out by um, starting with a roll call. Joe, we want to start? Just a roll call. I'm here. Yeah, but just hey, announce hey, your hey. name. Joe McParland here. Thanks. John Ketchum here. Bob Doan present. Mary Maslowski. Elizabeth Harder. Kathy Green here. And um, we will start by um, welcoming those of you that are here tonight. Um, as most of you know, this is, we're opening our meeting with our annual public information uh, public hearing. So I will ask that we're going to read the um, information hearing opening statement and then when anyone is recognized to come up and speak, would ask that you uh, please sign in on the front table and give us your name and address and announce yourself uh, before you speak so that we have a full record of who's here and speaking. Um, so we're going to open the public information hearing. Uh, the Harwich Community Preservation Committee will hold a public information hearing on Thursday, July 15th, 2021 at 6 p.m. in the Don B. Griffin Room, Town Hall, 732 Main Street, Harwich, Mass., 02645, pursuant to Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 44B, Community Preservation Act, Section 5B, Sub 1. As part of its study, the committee shall hold one or more public informational hearings on the needs, possibilities, and resources of the city or town regarding community preservation possibilities and resources, notice of which shall be posted publicly and published for each of two weeks preceding a hearing in a newspaper of general circulation in the city or town. Uh, learn about the act and to discuss possible projects consistent with the act and to review the submittal guidelines. The act includes projects related to open space, community housing, historic preservation and recreation. Application information is available online at www.harwich-ma.gov backslash community preservation committee. Um, if you have an idea for the project uh, that would meet the requirements of CPC, then please bring the idea forward at tonight's meeting. So with that being said, we'd we'll like to open up uh, the meeting for uh, anyone in the public who wishes to speak and uh, participate in our public hearing and give us your opinions on what you would like to see us do over the next year. Anyone? No one? <laughs> we don't bite. All right, Jenny. Hi. Hi, Jenny. Could you sign in on the on the sign-in sheet, please? It's way up here at the table. Sorry. Oh, I should probably print that. Oh, I know. Wait, My wait. writing is terrible. <laughs> Jan wanted me to make sure that everybody signs in, so I'm okay. trying to follow the rules. It's that record that thing. Game? All right. Good evening. I'm Jenny Hewitt. I'm the library director. Um, I want to thank you for all the work that you have funded at the library over the years through various projects. Um, we are not planning to apply for CPC funding this year, but I'm here because, is this, are you catching me? Is this okay? I never know how, where the mic should be. Um, to provide, because um, no part of it is also to provide input from the community on priorities and needs. And so I want to talk about two things, and the first is historic preservation. It's extremely important to preserve our historic buildings. They're a key component of our cultural heritage. Um, last year I heard concerns about Brooks Academy and how much the work would be and what's coming down the pike in future years. Um, that's all true. Um, it is extremely, historic preservation is extremely expensive, um, which is why it's fantastic that it was included as a category that's eligible for CPC funds. Without that funding, municipalities would be tempted to cut costs, um, go the cheaper route, and not do things in accordance with Department of Interior standards. And then that's not historic preservation. Um, 
I attended the Historical Society annual meeting on their front lawn a few weeks ago, and I was really shocked to see the condition of the front facade. Um, it's almost as bad as the library before you funded that exterior preservation project. So I actually certainly hope that those projects are coming forward. I think it will be expensive, but it's also one of the key buildings in the town. Um, I think townspeople love it and want it to want that work to get done. And, and the other thing I wanted to mention was affordable housing. Um, and I'm speaking now as a resident. Um, they, um, the pandemic has caused a population shift of second homeowners moving here full time and not renting out their houses. And it's also this real estate surge is not news to anybody in the room. Um, so we're now at a crisis level. This has ex accelerated a problem, a trend that was already occurring and now we're at a crisis level. I heard someone a few years ago talk about it um, as the lower Cape having a demographic time bomb and that's exactly what it is and now we're there. Um, and I just, uh, any projects forthcoming this year that you can fund would be great. It's, it's not gonna help in the short term but you know maybe in a few years when things are actually built. Um, I just think any support you can provide on any discretionary funding, um, meaning not what's limited, if more has to go into housing, I think it needs this. There's no real other way to do this. And, and um, the rental housing, it, to me, is extremely important. It's the number one thing on the town's housing production plan. And um, it, it, with that, those, those non-affordable, the market rate units, those won't be sold to a second homeowner, so there will be people living in them. And uh, we need market rate housing as well. Um, so anyway, I just wanna urge you to support whatever you can for affordable housing. I, I, I don't want us to become, you know, Provincetown where they're closing schools and, and don't have children. And um, I once heard someone say that we shouldn't have housing projects because it would end up with more children in the school. And I will, I, I don't see how that's a complaint. You want a viable year round community and we are really heading to not have that. Thank you. Thanks, Jenny. Good evening, my name's Elizabeth Wade and I'm the Director of Land Acquisition and Project Development at Habitat for Humanity. And the first thing I want to do is thank you very much for your support of affordable housing. This past Saturday, we finally had the wall raising of the six homes at Murray Lane and your funding was critical to getting to that point. So we wanted to first extend our thanks we will look forward to more projects in the future. And uh, we don't have anything other than Murray Lane planned at the moment. But again, we just want to thank you. And I wanted to um, introduce myself as well. Christine Duran in the past has been the CPC coordinator. And she has retired happily to Florida. And I'll be taking over that position as well. So thank you. Thanks, Elizabeth. Yes, Bob. Yes. Yep. Um, what does it take? Do you typically like to do like Murray Lane, which is I think five or six? There's units? six homes. Yes. Um, as opposed to like single lots, do you do those too? Or, we or do. What? We do single lots. Um, oftentimes, the costs can be higher right. when you're doing a single home build. What, uh, for example, we have a project that will be starting in Sandwich that is a scatter site uh, project. And so there's two homes on one lot and one home on another with close proximity. And so that's, that's kind of uh, a good way to plan out a project and to spread costs out across a number of units. Okay. And if you um, had land, available to you, like a, a block unit was quite a bit for four or five houses. Are you in a position to, to uh, move forward or can you only do so many projects at a time due to your staffing and right. money, et cetera? Right, so we have um, project planning and we are unable 
you know, if you gave us land in next week, right. we have to put that project into our calendar. And right now we're looking at builds that are happening in 2023 mm -hmm. and 2024. Typically from the point of access to the land and moving through permitting, which is often the 40B process, it's between 18 months and two years, just to get to the point of being able to just start the infrastructure. Thank you for the information. You're welcome. Any other questions? If I could have your email. Yes. Because I have Chris's. Yes, absolutely. Things, so Would you like me to write it on the That'd sheet? That'd be grand. Mm -hmm. All right, happy to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. I think that was here, actually. Oops. How are you? Hi, Chris, Chris Joyce, I'm representing Harwich uh, Historical Society. You'd probably be better served with our director, but she's busy at the museum tonight. Um, as a bit of background, um, the society was founded in 1953, and its mission is to preserve, collect, interpret Harwich history through exhibits, educational programs, active collecting, and research. In addition to the 200 plus members that we have, and even more donors, Harwich Historical Society's community <coughs> consists of people here on Cape Cod and actually throughout the United States with a connection to Harwich. The board intends this year to submit an application for CPC funds for the 2023 budget year that will focus on digitalizing more of our collections of photos, documents, such things as diaries, 35 millimeter film, and some CDs. By converting to a digital format, we believe we'll be able to provide our community with more timely research, which is one of our main mission uh, points in our mission statement. Two frequent examples are research requests from homeowners looking for info on historic homes uh, here in Harwich. And then we get numerous requests, requests for research on ancestors. So, we believe the conversion will allow members, patrons, and of course us uh, doing some research, but for them to do their own research without affecting the quality of collections. We look forward to being before you later in the year with a solid application. Thank you. Thank you. Michael. Hi, everybody. Nice to see you all. Uh, Michael Locke, Executive Director with the, the nonprofit Harwich Conservation Trust. Um, I, I wanted to speak to two items. First, thank you very much for supporting the Harwich uh, Natural Heritage Trails Phase 1, a wheelchair accessible loop uh, project uh, at this past town meeting. Um, we're pleased to report that um, HCT and the town and other uh, Cold Brook Eco Restoration Partners, <coughs> among which are the State's Division of Ecological Restoration and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, um, have recently completed a 75% design level uh, for the Eco Restoration Project. So we're now at a point where we can begin the planning process for enhancing visitor access, a portion of which is the proposed wheelchair accessible loop. Uh, so we, we hope to embark on that uh, planning process in August uh, and then through the fall, and we look forward to keeping you updated as you see fit. 
Um, that, again, to uh, remind everybody, the, the article that was funded, um, $150,000, again, thanks to your support and town meeting voter support, is designed to um, fund the uh, design and uh, the permitting uh, phase and construction also of the wheelchair accessible um, uh, trail loop. Um, there was supposed to be a phase two uh, as part of that original application, but we uh, understood that there were uh, many uh, requests coming before the CPC, and we talked to um, the Town of Harwich Youth and Recreation Commission and decided to uh, only move forward with, with phase one. Um, again, to clarify, it was, it was meant to be a larger project, a larger budgeted project, a little bit larger scope, but we chose to compartmentalize it into phase one. Um, if we can make enough progress between now and October one, we may submit an application for phase two for your consideration, but uh, that's to be determined. The second item is I just wanted to say uh, thanks um, to, to your group and um, uh, the town for partnering with HCT on important land acquisition projects. We know with the escalating real estate market, that's put increased pressure on so many town endeavors, whether it's uh, affordable housing um, or uh, open space acquisition. Uh, with the rising prices, we're seeing more land clearing at an accelerated rate, and uh, the window is, is rapidly closing on the last priority lands uh, across the town. And so we look forward to partnering with the town, in particular the Town Real Estate and Open Space Committee, which we know provides recommendations to the town selectmen um, in uh, future uh, CPA funding applications for your consideration. Again, it remains to be determined whether there'll be an application submitted in time for your October 1 deadline, but, um, but we'll see. So uh, thanks as always for your ongoing uh, support of these important open space endeavors. Thank you, Michael. Hi, Robin Kelly, your cemetery administrator for the town of Howitch. Uh, first, thank you for uh, all the past articles. I usually submit one or two a year. Um, and I just, a little update, we're actually saving money this year on the Pine Grove uh, Gravestone Conservation Project, which you guys allocated $75,000 for. Uh, all the bids came in and it's, we got a bid of 42,000. Uh, I did go and vet them to make sure I checked every single one of their references and um, had them all email me back that this gentleman could do the work. And uh, I'm very excited that, of that project moving forward. So I think everyone in West Howitch will be uh, very elated with that as well. So they are gonna be start work um, in the next month. Um, so I am going out to bid on the Veterans Memorial Circle flags in the electricity soon. And I will be submitting for in October 1 for phase two of the Veterans Circle for um, we are doing a revolutionary war and a civil war memorial of all the uh, veterans that were had gone into service that were in this town. So I've been doing a lot of extensive research on we had a lot of uh, ship captains that ended up serving in the Civil War and um, getting, making sure that all of them were registered here as Howitch residents at the time of enlistment, because only Howitch residents can go on that. Uh, on the Revolutionary War Memorial, because we owned Brewster at the time, um, there's a lot more um, people that I'm getting on the list that were not buried here in Howitch, that I'm finding are buried actually in Brewster, but they were Howitch residents at the time of enlistment and the DAR said that they would have to be listed on our memorial as they are Howitch residents on their record. So uh, I will be putting that forward by October 1st. I'm hoping to have all the names completed and um, look forward to your support and on my upcoming projects. But thank you very much for all you've done. Sure, Bob. So what about eight, the War of 1812? Do we have any documentation of people <laughs> on that? <laughs> we do, but I was working on these two first. <laughs> <laughs>
but we do have um, some documentation on them, not as many. And eventually we will, go, we will be doing a, it's gonna be a walk of remembrance. So as the memorials are placed, we're doing a walk of remembrance for the future. So uh, we have a lot of veterans that are coming forward that want to be, um, they're interested in this project. So they're giving us input and they've been to a couple of our meetings and written letters to us on um, things that they would like to see for the future. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Robin. Anyone else? Any other questions from members of the board? About future projects? So uh, we, I, yeah, Bob? Let me ask uh, Mike a question. Um, on the Kendrick property, South Howard, which is a fantastic new trail that you opened up this past year. Um, in fact, you can't even get a parking spot there when it was first open for sure for several months. Um, I know you did do some documentation on the Kendrick family there. Is there anything else planned? I know you did some archaeological digs, I believe, and what's the status of that? So by, by way of background, this, this property is the 49-acre the, the uh, Pleasant Bay Woodlands, former uh, Kendrick farm. Um, in East Harwich, about a thousand feet back from Round Cove uh, on Pleasant Bay, mm -hmm. and uh, very important during that 2013-2015 time frame, uh, to uh, the community really step forward to pull together the funds to make that acquisition possible. So, to reflect on what uh, Bob is 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 discussing, uh, we engaged with a um, archaeological team to uh, study the potential resources in a phase one. Um, analysis it took five years. Uh, we have uh, partners in uh, UK, in, in England, at University of Cambridge, and also University of Boston. Also uh, on the team, uh, Scott Ridley uh, and uh, Professor Tim Earle uh, from Northwestern University. So we had to undertake that um, study to uh, make sure that where we were placing the trail that Bob mentioned and the trailhead parking area w wasn't accident accidentally interfering with any potential archaeological sensitivity. Turns out it was not, after uh, over 200 um, uh, shallow test pits, just to make sure. Uh, and we were able to establish that trailhead and, and um, um, trails uh, this past December and open it to the public. As for phase two, as COVID restrictions ease, hopefully consistently, we'll be able to re-engage um, uh, in person uh, when our partner from um, UK um, is able to uh, cross the pond, shall we say, and uh, uh, meet us here again in the spring and fall, because that was the, the time that, um, that Elizabeth Damaris, archeologist uh, from UK Cambridge, uh, was able to visit um, during the first five-year phase. So that's to be determined when we're able to start phase two. Phase two will focus mostly on where the a former house site was for the Kendrick family. Um, Meanwhile, what we're working on is a historic uh, interpretive pamphlet um, that will uh, discuss some of the, um, the history, the human history and natural history of the area, including Native American settlements in the region, um, as well as uh, early colonial uh, settlements. And I think it'll be a, a very, really fascinating look at how rural life uh, evolved um, uh, in um, that area as uh, providing uh, um, a larger context for Cape Cod as a region. So stay tuned for the release of that pamphlet. Um, there'll be si interpretive signposts. Uh, they'll be numbered corresponding to um, uh, interpretive text in the pamphlet. And uh, uh, right now, actually, a uh, portion of that pamphlet, which references um, the, the early farm journals from about a century ago, um, those are posted uh, in full, the analysis completed by Professor Tim Earle on our website, harwichconservationtrust.org. So uh, we're, we're actively working to bring the story of the land, its people, its um, wildlife, natural history alive uh, more and more. So thanks for your curiosity. And well, before you go. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and I'm, I'm a representative from the Historic Commission, and of course, one of the hurdles you had to get over was that approval to tear down what was there, which was very difficult for the historic commission to, to see go. Um, but I think, and you had talked at the time that you would do something 
along that and you're following it. But do you think you may need some uh, funds from the CPC to enhance the, whether it be like putting in the, um, marking the foundations, which you kind of see now, but mm -hmm. doing that permanently? Because that actually comes probably under historic, under the CPC funds, not land preservation. But I want to throw that out if you're yeah. interested in Thank that. you. That Thank you for mentioning that. Uh, we don't have uh, any uh, plans right now to submit a proposal for funding, but that's something that we can consider as we continue to work through the historic interpretive aspects. Thank you. Yeah. And just for my edification, the trailhead comes off of Bay Road? Uh, uh, Kendrick Road. It does come off of Yeah, Kendrick. and for folks using the uh, GPS uh, in their smartphones, you could, you could plug in 75 Kendrick Road, okay. East Harwich. Yep. All right. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Michael. Any other questions from members of the board? So one of the other items that we typically talk about is our application process. As of right now, we always say October 1st is our, is our date for a submission. Um, I think that's where we stand unless something else um, comes up and um, our applications are online on the website. And our goal is to have things submitted both in paper and in electronic form where possible so that John can upload them onto the website. Um, so we haven't had a conversation yet about that process for okay. this year. But to start with, as far as I'm aware, the only we only have right now on the website for download last year's application. So we need to get a current version of the application package up on the website probably soon. Okay. Before our next meeting, I would say. Right. So the question is what updates need to be made to the application package. And we should probably also have a discussion about the process since last year was a modification from previous years. Mm -hmm. and uh, We should at least confirm that we're going to go with the same process we did or talk about any anybody's notions about how that might change this year. So we do have part of that discussion for our regular portion of our meeting later on. Um, but as far as the public hearing portion, are there any other questions that people are interested in, Jenny? Sorry, I didn't think of this earlier. But I just wanted to compliment you because um, the, our reference staff wants to compliment you because the information on your portion of the town website is awesome. All the applications, the amendments to the applications, it's just awesome because people come in and ask us about that and you know in previous years it wasn't always there or they might be there um, you know the first thing, iteration but things got changed and we might not have that and so it's hard for people to know whether they support or object to something if they um, don't have the full info so thank you. Love that. That's all John. That's, yes. That is John. That's yes. All John. <laughs> Any other questions, any other comments? So I'd like to personally thank everyone for attending our information session. I think those of us who've been on the board for a few years will be um, happy to say that it's much more fruitful than it has been in years past. There have been years when we've had one person show up. Um, so thank you all for coming. Um, we appreciate the input. It is um, extremely important to us in helping guide us in making our decisions later on. Um, so we always look forward to seeing your applications in October and deliberating over them uh, come the beginning of January. So um, as John pointed out, the new application is not on the website yet. It will be uh, hopefully by, I would say, if this is mid-July, hopefully by uh, the end of August so that It'll give people an opportunity to, to take a look at the application and give you a, um, at least the month to, to get it uh, completed. But um, if you uh, have questions, you can always email the CPC through the uh, CPC email address. It should be cpc at uh, townofharwich.com. So, uh, and it is on the website. So you can go to our page and um, link directly back to the group and Jan will 
um, shepherd those questions to the board and to uh, David Nixon, who unfortunately was unable to attend this evening. So I thank you all very much. Um, if there's nothing else for the public hearing portion, uh, I would entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Is there a second? So motion's been made by Bob Doan, seconded by Elizabeth Harder. Um, to close the public hearing, all those in favor? Aye. Any in opposition? It is unanimous and the public hearing is closed at 6.32 p.m. Thank you very much everyone for attending this, this portion. Um, we'll now move on to our regular CPC meeting. Um, the first item on our agenda is the approval of the meeting minutes for June 10th, 2021. Has anyone had an opportunity to review them? Yes, Jan. I have one correction okay. that I didn't give you all yesterday. Or um, I have a brain issue every now and then. I continually forget that um, Bob, I mean um, Don, is um, our liaison and not a guest. And I always right. put him under guest. He's not a guest, so I switched it. And on the approved minutes, when they go online, they'll just show him not as a guest they'll they'll list him but he's not as a guest okay does anyone object to that change making that change to the minutes um no. are we ready for a vote on the minutes uh, i'll entertain a motion to approve so moved is there a second second so motion's been made by elizabeth harder and john did you second yes seconded by john um all those in favor aye, aye. aye. any in opposition hearing none it is unanimous so the next item on our agenda is new business. It is the first meeting in July and it is time for us to reorganize. Wait, oh, um, that's okay. Are we not doing to the elder? Oh, I did. I jumped over that. I'm sorry. Um, I personally, we can, um, happy to entertain a discussion about the Judah elders property. I um, am not looking forward to making a decision today with David not present. Um, but if anyone has comments, I, I know it had been, we had given the selectmen some time to discuss it and I don't think we've heard back from them. Well, we gave so them I don't think, two months till August. Right, so, so I don't think it's, I don't think it's it appropriate to even be on. Was, it was on there if we okay. had info, we don't. So, so. Um, that being said, is everybody okay if we Post, jump over yeah. the Judah Eldridge discussion? Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. Um, so then the next item on our agenda is the reorganization of the community preservation committee um, so we typically vote the chair and the vice chair each year uh, the vice chair is really interested to know if Kathy is really interested in <laughs> taking her job back how long did I have that job I finally get rid many of many years <laughs> well, you, you had a vacation yeah. you're ready to come back I was able to take a year off right <laughs> So I'm, if nobody else is interested and you're not interested, I'm happy to still do it. However, I'd be thrilled to have you back doing your job better than I do. That is for sure. Um, that also being said, uh, I, um, we can have discussions and then open it up to nominations for. Is it something we can vote on without Dave being here? Yep. Those two things? Yep. The chairman also? Yeah. Yep. Oh. Doesn't mean so. he's not going to get nominated. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to raise my hand. Mary, I'd be happy to. Would you? Great. Um, so I will um, start by opening nominations for vice chairperson. And Elizabeth. Oh, I nominate Kathy. And I second it. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Any other nominations on the floor? Ooh. Hearing none. <laughs> All those in favor of Aye. Kathy. All those in opposition, hearing none. It's unanimous. Yay. <laughs> Seriously, thank you very much, Kathy, yeah. because um, I know you have your plate full. I uh, I am I know you do. Thrilled. I know. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I'm happy to help out in any way possible. However, um, you do a much better job at the vice chair role than I'm sure David I needs than I do. <laughs> um, so then, that being said, nominations for the chairperson of CPC for the next calendar year. Does anyone want to put a certain name into nomination? <laughs> I nominate Dave Nixon. 
Thank you, John. Second. second. And I hear a second. S any other nominations for chairperson? Hearing none, all those in favor of David Nixon remaining as our chairperson? Aye. Aye. Any in opposition? Hearing none, motion carries. Yay, the dynamic duo is back. <laughs> Seriously, I kind of like not having to bring my big bag of stuff every single uh, time. <laughs> I understand that. I do. And, and I think David will enjoy having you bring your big bag of stuff once again. Great. Okay. Um, okay, so then I don't think there's anything else we need to do for reorganization. Um, other than those two, uh, the next item on our agenda is um, continuing our, our discussion about creating a written policy for land purchase procedures. Yes, Kathy. Uh, I do believe, I think that we mentioned the last time that um, Don Howell said that they wanted to discuss at the Board of Selectmen level Perfect. a process before it came to us. I think it would be premature for us to Perfect. spend time doing that. I am happy to go along with that. Yeah, because we do. We need to know what they, what, what they want. Um, that's very true. Uh, is any anyone in disagree with that and wish to I don't discuss? disagree with that. I just have a question on the actual process of that and whose major responsibility that is. Because I as I've been on this community now second year, we we are a bit autonomous, you know what I mean? Like in my housing committee, we we serve at the pleasure of the selectmen. We don't get to do it, you know, vote or anything. But here we vote on money issues, including land acquisition stuff. So I just think we should be very, very involved in that. Are, are, you, are you saying, Kat, that the selectmen are going to tell us how to do that? No, I, I, I think what I had heard on our last Zoom meeting was that they wanted to take the subject up. I mean, you know, there was currently a land acquisition policy that the selectmen put forth oh. back in 2011, okay. all right? And that was something that the Real Estate and Open Space Committee, who I represent, followed, okay? Now, we've had a lot of additional issues that have come up uh, around that, that were not included in sort of, never covered. So I, I think that they want to look at the, the big picture and see what they want to see happen, and then we can take it from there. I understand what you're saying about, certainly about the autonomy. Yeah, okay. I don't think the selectman's policy for Rios and in general in any way hampers us in being able to say well we if if we're funding money for a land purchase these are the things that we need to see as a part of the application process right, right. so i, I think I, I think to your point it's just would be nice to see what I they just want to make sure there isn't anything yeah. in particular mm -hmm. that's going to pop up that's going to really affect no i'm just working on that um the, the one thing about that that um you were going to give us a copy of what oh yeah the real I will do that I'll send that is. to you um, just for my edification since I'm mm -hmm. fairly new to this it would be helpful to know and then we can see yep. I'll have a jumping off point to see right and again like I said it didn't whatever. include a lot of the issues that, that have come up recently that we've had to deal with especially <clears throat> the legal issues but it was at least a starting point. Right. So. I had to jump off the last, you know, probably half an hour of the yeah. of the June meeting. So, I thank you yeah, for, I'll, for I'll pointing both that. of those I'll items I'll out. To everybody, thank you. So the next item is really our planning and updates to the CPC funding application. Um, I know Kathy has led the charge in that in the past. I didn't do it last year because I, I was know, on the I committee. I know you didn't, and. Um, <laughs> We made very nominal changes to it last year. Mm -hmm. If memory serves, Jan sent it to me, and we updated some dates and that's it. Kept it pretty pretty similar to the one from last year. Yeah. Um, does anybody? Again, we may be premature based on you know not having heard some feedback from selectmen. Is there anything that people really want to see changed? Is this, I want to make sure I'm not stepping over another thing but uh is this also have to do with the it's the whole process as well right not just the application itself so right so okay. we can so the application is supposed to be in october 1st yep 
And I guess what I'm asking is, uh, in the past, because some of you guys have been members for many years, has that all, ever been a hard stop date? I felt like we were rushing to excellence during the process. After October 1st, people were throwing stuff at us. So the year before I started, and Kathy, correct me if I'm wrong, the year before I started, it was a hard stop date, and people were, this board was telling um, applicants to, that they needed to get approval from the other boards and commissions, and when that hadn't happened, they prevented the, the, um, the applications didn't go forward, was, was my understanding at the time. Then the next year, we tried, we extended the deadlines a little bit so that we gave people more time to first submit applications and then come to the other committees. Because, for example, for Bob and myself on Historic, we'll have a meeting next week. We'll have one meeting in August. We'll have one meeting in September. So um, it's depending on the, the volume of historic applications, sometimes the timing isn't there for people to really get their ducks lined up to be able to get it to us by in time for a mid-September agenda on historic as one of the sign-offs that they'd need to do to be able to check that off on the application. So we had discussed in the past few years giving people extra time for that. So I think one or two years we gave people through the middle or the end of December in order to do that. They still submitted their application by whatever date we decided, whether it was the 1st or the 15th of October, but then had the two months to kind of get the vetting through selectmen where it needed selectmen and, and historic when it needed historic. Yes, Kathy. Um, yeah, I mean, there's really only been one year that we did not have October 1st as the, yeah. the drop dead date that you submit an application. We've never really turned an application down because they didn't have all the approvals. Okay. The, that one year that we extended the date by a month was be, something was going on administration-wise yep. that stuff did not get, you know, submitted. So we extended it. Okay. But then we just we just we wanted to keep it at the October first. Okay. Um, so many of the applicants are repeat applicants. I mean, as you already know from sure. just a couple of years that you've been on it and they're well aware of the date they're well aware of the approvals that are mm -hmm. you know uh, needed so um, I don't think we should fool around with the date I mean I do think that you know if someone comes and is missing an approval you know we ask them about it they tell us when they're gonna go get it because maybe they haven't had a public meeting maybe they mm -hmm. haven't had a, a quorum at one of the committees or something like that I mean, I don't think we've never, we've never not accepted an okay. application because of that. All right. Um, but if someone doesn't get an application in by October 1st, or whether it be the second or the third, depending on where that the Monday is. falls, whatever it is, uh, that date, um, we don't accept the application. Okay. I, I, my point was on that one anomaly where we got that stuff thrown at us, at us the day before the town meeting. Right. That was, that was one off, you know what I mean? But most people. But that, that application this had year. been submitted yeah. and it was right. changed that wasn't right. that's right. a different thing other than the process yeah. and that's i think we need to part. yeah right right i think we need to firm up some of that in terms of mm -hmm. uh being sort of blindsided by major increases in the request for funding at the last minute yeah. or that kind of thing i think we need to maybe kind of finesse that a little well, bit well and i i think too my understanding is that along with the selectmen kind of doing their policy it's also administration kind of getting back to being involved in the applications right. because like i said with with the historic one that that we put in um two years ago it was i legitimately should have gone to administration and said hey yeah. this is what we're looking to do um will we be able to get the support to be able to do it and didn't at the time and it was in the middle of transition and yeah. all of that so um, I do think there were, uh, there will be some changes in that regard. I know um, at one of our meetings, Joe had indicated that to, to us, that he yes. was going to do that. So I'm hoping that that's going to help part of it when it comes to the town side applications, um, as opposed to, you know, just the, the yeah. third parties. So um, we, yeah. we had um, discussed making sure that the lawyer had vetted things before. Mm -hmm. we voted on them are we 
going to ask um, people who submit requests to bring it to the lawyer before October 1st, or will it be our job after so, so I would say there is a legal bill that would have to be paid there one way or the other, and it's either going to be a town fund or it's going to be the CPC fund. Um, I would tend to think it may be the CPC that's going to have to pay for that legal review. So I don't think that that could happen before the applications are submitted. And then I think, you know, if, if, um, if the goal is to have the, the legal review beforehand and that's the pleasure of the board, then I think that's something that can – we can make happen with our administrative funds or um, <clears throat> or otherwise. Kathy? Yeah, I think that, that um, having the town administrator uh, vet all of the applications initially, that may include like sort of a legal mm -hmm. overview because not every single application has a, a legal component to right. it. And then we can take it from there. Right. And I just wanted to say one other thing about the sort of the actual application. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I know we want to move to electronically. I, I like the paper because I like to keep it in front of me, make notes, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I, I do think that we need to make sure people are not submitting the applications with all the fancy covers on them because they take up too much room. We don't need it. Also, we don't need another copy of the guidelines and the da 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 da, -da. I mean, we need to save paper somehow. So I think we need to really just you know drive down what we actually mm -hmm. want <laughs> I don't disagree with you at all I mean the yeah. less is sometimes more right so we, we it says it on there I know it does but people doesn't but I so I think it, I think it would be responsible of any of us that um, represent a committee or commission and we know that someone is going to be submitting something that has to do with that area that we maybe touch base with them and mm -hmm. try to make sure they understand mm -hmm. some of the um, process. Absolutely. You know, and we can also uh, make sure that it's clear on the website that you know the the application should be submitted in you know on plain eight and a half by eleven paper uh, without right without yeah. additional in, in in a form that you know can be easily. In point in fact, sometimes stuff is submitted, and I and I've been on this committee a long time. Yes, you have. The committee members don't read all the stuff. No, they don't. Okay. <laughs> um, and point in fact, the Jenkins property, the property off the of headwaters, there was a an appraisal attached to the application at the beginning. You know, so I think it was an old one, wasn't it? It was, it was like from not last old, it was more of the agricultural um, gotcha. aspect. So, but it still was, you know, it should have been considered um, as part of it, you know, and I, I think we kind of, whatever. But, but that's okay, you can <laughs> disagree. Exactly. Um, so I just think we just need to kind of drill down yeah. on some of this, that's all. I don't disagree. Um, if we, are you willing to, um, would you have time to look at, the application the current application and note some changes that yeah i don't have make. it online though i mean i don't have it to make the changes okay because i didn't do it last year yeah i think jan got it from well, me there last is year. one there's one online yeah and That's give me a sec i probably have a hard copy here but i'm just thinking the online version probably has to be converted <laughs> into, a, into a word document but it started you as a word document right so yeah. Well, actually, it started as a <laughs> as a what? Um, um, oh, I think it was a hard. I mean, I yeah. did it on paper. Here's one. Here's one. Here's a hard copy for you, though. You know me, John. I like the cut and paste. No. Can you pass that? Thank you so much. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. But, so it is online, and if you want, I'll just send you um, a, PD, uh, 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 a word doc of it. But it okay. is online. But I'll just send you the hard one. Okay. Um, Do you but, have it in a word form? Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Well, so if you you don't want that, this is an extra. Yeah, you can okay. have it. So no, you just want me to update the. Is it. there anything else that anybody wants changed in terms of? Uh, so I was going to say if you if you want to take a stab at it, and then I'm happy to look at it again, mm -hmm. and we can um, make sure we're not missing something. So 
when you make changes in the Word document, mm. can you turn track changes on so we can yep. see? I don't know what that is, John, I can but do if that. you tell me what that is, <laughs> I'll tell her. If you I'll, tell me how to do, do that, I can do Microsoft it. Do you use Microsoft Word? Um, she has Apple. I, you can have so Microsoft Word on Apple. Sure. I, I don't know if I do, but it's, I... It comes it's off, hard to do the track it, changes. It, it doesn't yeah. It's hard to do easily. the track changes, I know that. Uh, so, Apple, so really? Kathy, if you, if, you send me the, if you send me your marked up Word version, I can compare the two and get it back to him so that he can okay. see the. So well, not just it's not just for me though. No, no, no. But I'm saying I no. But I'm so saying it's. Can see I'm saying I can do a, a track yeah, changes no, version. All I'm asking is yep. if you send me a word document, yep. can I make changes to the word document? Yes, because I will have I will have Jan send me in a, send me the same one she's sending you, and then you can send me a revised one, and I'll then I can compare everybody. the two. I'll send everybody a copy of the current okay. app. Okay. I can compare I'll, the two and track. I'll do my best. It'll show the changes. It'll show what you yeah, what you made. Right? Yeah. Um, compare the two. The one thing you can do on Apple, because I have this problem sometimes too, if I'm using my iPad, um, you can just color, change the color of what you're changing. Yeah. Like highlight. Um, just no, change just, the color. Just the, make whatever. Just make the text whatever, whatever color. Text you're adding. I would just appreciate if you yeah. just make the changes and I can track. Yeah. Them. So. PC version, and it surprises me that on Mac this doesn't exist too. What Mary's saying is you can just do a comparison thing Correct. inside Word Correct. and it identifies the changes. So yeah. you don't really need a color. I actually thing. find it better than track changes by tur better than turning track changes on because the changes get hidden. And if yeah. you if you hide the changes, you don't know that they're tracked, yeah, yeah. and you don't always see them. So I don't know how to do either of those That's things. Okay. That's <laughs> why I'm saying don't I will that. make the changes. That's why I'm and saying just make the changes. Email them, and we can do the compare and, and so, circulate it to everyone. Go ahead. I was just I was just going to suggest mm -hmm. we're waiting for the land acquisition, but when we went through and we looked to see what the application actually stated, the committee all knows. We need X, Y, and Z for a land acquisition or something involving that. The application doesn't state that stuff. It used to. Yeah, somewhere along the line, it's gone. It used to say we needed an appraisal and et yeah, cetera, it did. et cetera. I don't think it does now. It did at one point. That's and what I, I know. And we didn't delete that last year. I know that's so certain. So I don't know when or where, but I don't think it does anymore. So that's... Jen, this actually is, doesn't include the application. It doesn't have no, all the pages on there? No. no. Maybe this extra one does. This one says extra. So Joe just brought up the suggestion that <clears throat> we have a I actually don't know what they call it, but in the PDF, you can generate a PDF where you can fill in the and blanks. Populate it. Populate the fields on on your computer, which would make things a lot easier. You mean for the applicants? Yeah. Yes. We had discussed that at one point, and we decided that we didn't want to do that because we felt that people were going to change the application. <laughs> like they well, that's eliminate, if you do they... If you do it in Word, if, mm. if you try to do that by giving the applicant the Word document, that's a problem. But there is a way to generate a PDF where you define the things, the blank. In places. Adobe Acrobat Pro, you can set up yeah. you can set up text boxes mm -hmm. um, for insertion. So, right. so who has Acrobat Pro? Not I. Mm. Well, I think it's. I don't yeah. either, but it... May I make a comment on that? I, you, it, it's very difficult to do those and have them foolproof. Uh, I don't know. I, I, fill, I, fill these, I fill these out. I'll, you know, you get them and you fill them out, uh, and more often than not, it either then makes the writing real small or it doesn't it shrinks it to fit. Box. It shrinks it to fit and, the text box. It, it does. It's, yeah. Sometimes it's, it's, it's awkward. Yeah. But you don't have a lot of flexibility. Not my favorite. Could I make the suggestion that we start with the changes, and then if we still have time, then we can look to to trying that as an option, and if we don't have time, then we won't. 
That would be my suggestion. I, I think that with my experience with other committees, the less tech savvy we, we make something, the better, because um, Don't say that to Kathy, because she will literally cut and paste. <laughs> you know, I, I just think it's easier. I mean, a lot of people do cut and paste, and they're very, that's the way they've always done it. They don't want to no, listen. We're talking it. about cutting Cut. and pasting. And, and pasting, pasting. literally. Um, so, <laughs> you know, I, I just think that you know, most people, most I other committees do, do not like high tech. So if we start with the changes, like if you can take a high level, like, you know, you know what it's supposed to look like better than probably most of us, because I think you probably served the longest. I will review it. I will just mention that this is the 2020 application. And on the bottom, the, fund, the application was due October 30th. So this is last, last year. This, is, this isn't the most current one then. It's uh, is it? Well, no, 2020. No, no, this that is right. Yeah, yeah. No, 2020. No, yeah. 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 For, no. for FY22. Yes, we did. We changed that last year. Yeah, okay. No, no, okay. So because I of thought COVID. I had last year. It was just because of COVID. COVID. We gave them, yeah. Yeah. Is this it's committee in agreement that we should change it back to October 1st? Yes. yes. Because we need the I'm time. Yes. Especially yes. if the town administrator is going to vet some of these things. Yeah. October 1st is a Friday. Do we want to keep it on yep. October 1st? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. That is perfect. 4 p.m. on the Friday yeah. afternoon. Right. So and I will change all the appropriate dates, and I'll also look to see if there's anything that we might want to, I don't know. And I think we asked for hard copies and a, and a copy on the yeah. flash drive. Yeah. yeah. We did, and I think we should do that again. I, I don't disagree. It makes it a lot easier for our tech person to get it up on the website. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, obviously, uh, that was yeah, a clearly big plus. It's nice to hear a librarian yeah. say that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, and sort of confirms that that's yeah. the right direction. Uh, so in terms of all the extra boilerplate that some applicants just leave in there to the point you actually don't know what the proposal is until you get to page 25. Mm -hmm. right. um, I think that I should try to put wherever on the website people go to download the application some like bold face instructions about that that would and be whatever, great whatever the um whatever the text is in the package mm -hmm. that describes that maybe you should review that again kathy okay when you're reviewing the whole thing in terms of the sure process yeah. in terms of that part of the process like make sure it's clear so the only concern i would have is any so when we've gone back and forth on on agreements and, and contracts, we have always said that our application includes our terms and conditions and our terms and conditions are incorporated and, and are part of the contract and what they are going what the applicant is going to sign is the whole is the application. So we'll need to just make sure that we reference back to if we're cutting stuff out for that it to be instructions versus application, we want to just make sure that the instruction there's a sentence in there that says the instructions are incorporated herein and apart here too, so that it's their terms and conditions of the of the agreement. Well, were we just talking about eliminate? We weren't talking about eliminating it. We were just talking. No, but about if it's not on the port, if it's if they're not sending it in as the part that they sign. But hardly anybody, not everybody did that. Okay. So, All right, not everybody did that anyway. Right. So um, we only had a few that did that. Okay. So I just think I just think it's exactly. important that they know just to submit the application. Pages. It's in fa it's in two phases, phase one and phase two. And we say it, you know, just submit applications, pages one through three. Um, but last year we did have the extension for the mm -hmm. um, approvals, December thirtieth. Yeah, I don't. So we're, we're I don't think we need to. I don't think deadline. we should start off with that. No. no okay. I would start <laughs> with Let's just start off with October first as our deadline for everything. And we can take it from there. Well, you know? I think the proof, the proofs from the committee still should be December first. It's I really mean, difficult. It's that's what impossible. this. That's what this is. December thirtieth. I think I, I understood Kathy just to say that you said no, make everything just October first. December thirtieth is really late. Yeah. Late, I think. But I think it's December first or November thirtieth is reasonable for all the uh, committee approvals to be submitted. 
I do think you need the extra two months. I really do. Just okay. Do you want me to change this from December 30th to December 1st? Yeah. Is everybody in agreement with December that? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's where we were. were. Okay, so well, that's if you want, okay. You can make it December 3rd or leave it on the 9th. Um, I'll just put December 1st. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I think that works. Okay. That gives us not only September, October, it gives us November. Yeah. So. That's helpful. I know it's helpful to us on historic because, um, and I know it will be helpful on planning even though we meet twice a, a month because we, you know, those agendas get long mm -hmm. and our lead time yeah, is long on yeah, agendas. No. So. I mean, there, we don't really have like a place that sort of emphasizes how important that is mm -hmm. to get in the queue sooner than later so if you if you when you're reviewing it if you find a place that you think okay. it belongs I mean we're very wordy we are <laughs> we are you know and I don't know how many people actually read all this but most don't I know <laughs> all right or then submit three pages right <laughs> can, can everyone when can everyone take a look at this like if I had some comments can I because I'm all about brevity and uh, makes the meetings quicker, it makes the whole process quicker. But I, I really haven't read that in any detail, I can't lie. So if I see it and look at it, I can make some. Yeah, Jan's gonna send eight. the whole thing to everybody and then send your information to me. Okay. Is that all right? And then, Fine with me. you know, I can put it together. But I don't wanna to wait me. until, you know, middle of August. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So. I don't want us to. I don't want to see us get to a situation where we have a subcommittee to do it. Right. We don't need that. So, that's why I think uh, it's unless we're to have changing Kathy. the real, the meat of the thing. We can talk about it when when we bring changes forward right. at, at the next meeting. We just schedule it. So if you have changes, send it to Kathy. Kathy can incorporate them, and then when it gets on an agenda item, we. But can, if they're mostly dates and a statement, we may be able to do this by email and get it. To John sooner to post online you think we have to why do we have to bring it to the committee for approval because I think it's our application and we can't just act individually we have to act at a meeting but what if we're just changing the dates so I think if you're doing nothing but changing 20 to 21 maybe you're fine but I think you're I think you're in keeping with the open meeting law I think it's safer okay just my two cents put it on the next meeting agenda and if you would Jan and then it's down well, I was going to cross it out, but no, I'll keep it in there. Yeah, but yeah then we can just we confirm it and be done. Yeah, we just have Nothing to set. Isn't it always the second Thursday of the it's month? It's the second it's Thursday is what we should have, but nothing has been yeah, organized. Has, we haven't been very consistent about that. In the no. Well, COVID was a problem with most right. of that and trying to get time and space, too. So, And now that we're back in the building, it's we're starting. We went for a year where people could do multiple meetings on multiple accounts because we didn't have to share rooms and right. now we're sharing rooms again so so the 12th is the second Tuesday the Thursday rather um, so and does anybody have any other comments about what should be added to the website I know there seems to be a we do this every every month to John um, I will say to to Jenny's point about having everything on the website when Kathy and I were on the board two years ago three years ago and we each took a town and we looked at each town CPC one of the things I really liked about Dennis's CPC page was that they had all of the applications and all of the approved applications for you know five years back so you saw how much was approved you saw how much was um, you saw the whole all the details of all the applications so I do think it's great that we're, we're getting those online and being able to do that. But we don't, cause did you, I haven't been on the website recently, so did you put what was approved at town meeting? There's a, oh, at town meeting. Yeah, because I don't that's, think, yeah, that's I what matters. I didn't do It doesn't really I matter what we it. say. That's true. That's um, true. Right. That sh Maybe that's and I don't think we've done at. that in the past, and I think that that is something that we can look into. Yep. Good Again, point. it, it sh we should do like a, yeah. a you know five year look or something, and that's going to take a little bit of work. It is going to take um, a lot of work. <laughs> so, 
But even if we start with, if even if we start with, we have last year's applications there already. If we can put a hyperlink for those projects that were approved with, with the amounts that were approved at town meeting, mm -hmm. that might be really helpful. If you can find an easy way to do that, do you think? Um, yeah, it's not a big. Uh, the, the biggest hurdle there is me putting that information. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I've created a list since 2004. Have you? Uh, oh, really? And, yeah. What this is form, why she's what, your your what, new what vice chair. It? What form is it in? A Seriously. It's not in any form. It was just typed out on my computer. <laughs> but I could export it into a PDF for you, you or a Word document. You typed it out on your computer. It's in a file. Yeah. And yes. it's in a Let's, word processor file. Yes. Okay. But let me just say, okay, I created this list. It's up to date, and our chairperson has it. Awesome. Okay, so that chairperson has not decided to share it yet, but we do have a list. And I, I researched, I mean, I just did it a couple months ago, and I researched, I went through all the town meeting warrants, I went through all the applications, God I went through a lot of stuff. So I'm fairly sure I can say that it's 98% accurate, all right, maybe even 100%. So. Um, we do have something that's already I think there. we should put it up on the website. It, it, and I don't know whether this is something we have to vote on to do that. Um, well, I think we should I get our just, chair's opinion yeah, about that Yeah, I think we just first. have to, well, because we have to get it from our chair, I think, if, if it's currently with him. So well, he, has yeah. he has the hard document. I have the yeah. word processing right. document. So, yeah, I think as long as um, David's copacetic with it I, I think it's a great idea well, I think if I, you've done all that work I mean it's crazy not to yeah I, 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 there may have been some reasons I don't know yeah. so Kat, Kathy did you say 2004 yeah oh four so since 2004 can, can you send me a copy I promise I won't I cannot up. send it unless Dave really? tells me that it's okay Why is that? I understand that public information I mean, all that information is publicly. No, it's not because she's. She I created did it myself. It for herself. So. Well, where so. did you get? But you went to the library or something. I yeah, I had. Yeah, you can go online and and go into the town meeting warrants and Research. look to see what was approved. I also have every application since I joined the committee in 2011. So. It's crazy. <laughs> um, I, I just think it's respectful to David to just make sure he's okay with it before we put okay. it up. Okay. You I know. Was, I was gonna say send it to me so I can upload it. I just want to look at it. Right, I understand that. But okay, that's fine. Yeah. But the more sort of immediate thing is just this year's approval. Yep. yep. Which, can you send me that part of it so I don't have to go and remind myself? Sure. Thank you. Awesome. Sure. And I will post that uh, as, well, there's, there's a couple ways to do it. In the past, Jan, for the you know, the list of proposals has made a PDF document just listing the proposals, which I have posted, and then put the actual proposals um, up and put links, you know, mm -hmm. to the, the individual proposals. I would suggest that for the moment that I would put just like a PDF list of the approved uh, applications the application to the town meeting approved yeah. from the warrant Kathy did your list include the article number mm -hmm. like article 25 yeah. awesome mm -hmm. so, so I, I would just yeah. because that's the information that w right. we need going forward to yeah. you know say you won't like my list that's okay why not <laughs> because it says like article such and such then the description or the name of it and then the amount and then I totaled it but I, my numbers are a little bit like that. That's okay. <laughs> that's easily fixed, right? I can, I can format the thing. If okay, that's what you're perfect. saying, it's not properly formatted. <laughs> I don't have any problem with that. No, and I, I did just update it. Um, okay. So, good to go. Question. Yes. Did we want to include ones that didn't get approved on the website so we know? Well, it's, it's already up there. All that all list is there. on there. It's just. The mm -hmm. town meeting result is not up there. So. That's what I'm talking about. The ones that don't get no no not approved by us, but not approved. Town the ones meeting, that the right? ones that failed the town meeting, failed. right? So which we had a give a complete list and say some of them didn't get approved. Right. I don't think that we need to do that. I mean, 
I mean, I think, See what it looks I think if someone looks up a, a specific thing and it doesn't say approved, they're going to realize it was not approved. Well, but. but it's more like, you know, didn't this come up two years ago? What happened to it? And then go back and say, oh, it was not approved at town meeting. So, for example, like like what, the sand, sand pond. pond. Right. You could say the 2019 application failed the 2020 application, you know, whatever. That's what you're looking for. Yeah. I think the list that we have, just the projects itself, I think it might show which ones were withdrawn from our review. I'm not sure. I'm, what I'm I mean gonna go is, back and look at what's on the website. Right Could I make a suggestion rests. that we start with the Kathy 2021 list, and then when we come back next meeting, we can revisit what's there and see if we wanna do more. Does that make sense? Okay. With everyone okay with that? Yeah. Sure. You can do that for the next meeting. Yeah, I will. As soon as Kathy sends me her maybe thing with that information, I will look at it, maybe reformat it if, if her characterization of it is, is correct, and then just put it up there. Sure. So that'll be done That's within fine. the next few days. Um, and then we can talk. I'm, I might. I might try to put together the extended one with the unapproved ones on it just as a draft to bring to the next meeting mm -hmm. to look at and discuss. I will say that looking at the comprehensive list, it really uh, is very informative as to the amount of funding that the Community Preservation Act has uh, you know, approved over the last you know, 17 years. And, and and in in what areas? I, yeah, I think that w should be part of the description of what to for the public of what well, the CPC public can go done. on the uh, coalition's website I'm and go into the town of Harwich and look up all the projects. They're all listed there, or they should be listed there. I don't know; they should be because they're updated every year. Mm -hmm. I put and, those ones on from right. But there's a, a you know there's a whole chart and it lists the name of the project whether it was what it was funded for um, how it was funded too doesn't it hmm? does it it gives whether it's undesignated or it I think so I yes think it does yeah yeah and there's various ways that information can be rolled up though mm. right I mean specifically saying that the town of Harwich has spent X dollars on open space. Mm -hmm. Y dollars True. on historic. Sure. And we have had we have had those um, that information before this committee in the past. I've I've done that also like years ago, like in two thousand and I don't know, fifteen or something. I broke <coughs> it all down by category. I broke it all down by um, applicants within category. So if you wanted to see how much money had been funded to the Brooks Academy Museum since 2004, that would be an interesting number. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it would be. <laughs> sure it would be. Well, I think we should talk about how to present that information on <coughs> the web page. I agree. In a way that's useful and accessible by people. I agree. I, it's, it's like multidimensional stuff, so it's maybe not so straightforward <coughs> to just put up a simple PDF yeah. document for that, but uh, uh, that would be useful. <coughs> yeah. Okay. How could I suggest that as an agenda item for the next meeting? Website. <laughs> Keep the website on there, and we can talk about how to, yeah. Yeah. how and why to slice and dice the numbers and put the information well, just, forward. Uh, how to present historical mm -hmm. information. Well, because I think, too, we have this. Kathy in her last stint. Which what, but what Kathy during her last stint here did did the fantastic flyer that we used for a town meeting, and oh. you know that might be another really I good. I thought you were going to say Kathy in her last stint put together all this information about all of the funds that had to be rescinded from what years, <laughs> and that started that whole ball. Well, rolling. you did that too. <laughs> you did that too. I've done a lot of research. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and gone through every single application, I'm sure, since 2004. Yeah. No, well, we don't have all the applications. <coughs> There's a couple years that have been lost. 
Oh, really? The actual applications. Yes, if you go to the library. I, mean, I wasn't here. Like 2000 and, <laughs> 2007, 2008, a little sketchy. Yeah, we don't have everything. Before my time. But so good. Yeah. I have a room full of all this <clears throat> paperwork, mind you. So I and so does Kathy. Reason. Kathy, when did you start on this board, if I may ask? 2011, 2012, one of those two. I can't remember. And were you on at the same time David was, or did David come? No, David came after. So therein tells you why I'm thrilled that Kathy is our vice chair again. She pulled me back in. Exactly, exactly. I um, a, yes? Sorry. I have a quick question. Does anyone happen to know on the top of their head when our land bank obligation ends? Uh, we've got another couple of years, I think. I was going to say, it's, I think it's under five, but it's right around five, if memory serves. Um, and we can ask uh, Carol to double check that for the next meeting. I don't know the exact number off the top of my head, and I looked at it not that long ago. Um, <clears throat> so any other topics for the next agenda we've got? We had said we'll put Judy Eldridge back on, and hopefully we'll hear a report back from the selectmen by then. <clears throat> and if not, then to Kathy's point, it's still premature. Um, and follow up on the application and follow up on the website and, the and historical data. And should and we written. go through the application process about we, we have formally said we're going to have an yep. attorney look at it. Yep. So. so if we, how about we add the agenda item on the application is the application and the application process all in one. We can break that down and do all that together. And also the land, <coughs> the written policy, if the board does it, on the land acquisition. And again, that was a selectman item, so right. we'll skip over it if we don't get mm -hmm. get information back from them. Kathy? Yeah, I mean, just <coughs> if somebody has some thoughts, I mean, you might want to write down on paper what you think the process should be, so that mm -hmm. we're not just kind of throwing this Spinning. all out at the next meeting. Like, have a process in front of, of you and say, okay, this is mm -hmm. what I think the process should be. Applications submitted October 1st, you know, all approvals by December 1st, you know, legal reviews by November, for, or, you know, whatever. Right. You know? And I think some of that may depend on who the applicant is. Yeah, because of course. If it's, Absolutely. Right, if it's a town application, maybe the legal vetting can get done beforehand, and if it's... Well, that, that would be the hope right now, if now that third, all this has happened. Right. If it's a third party, you know, it's a Habitat for Humanity or it's a, yeah. or it's a somebody else, it's an after the fact. Right. Um, <coughs> but at least it wouldn't be 16 to do all at once. One more thing. Yeah. Sorry. Um, I did attend the um, Habitat for Humanity wall raising I couldn't on go. Saturday I'm so morning. Disappointed. And it really was, it was really quite something to watch. Um, <laughs> they had the Marines there. Police department, fire department, Fantastic. as well as the families. There was like a hundred people there, and it was raining Saturday morning. It was really something to watch, and um, I just wanted to <coughs> let you know that Richard Waystack uh, spoke on behalf of Don Howell, who couldn't be there, and he approached me and wanted to let me know to specifically thank the Community Preservation Committee for their funding of that project as well as other affordable housing projects that you know we funded in the past because it is very very much appreciated i wish i had been able to go and i i wasn't able to but it's that, nice to that see that project in particular we funded three hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars fifty thousand dollars a house for pre-development costs which they have to have yep. um took a long time like she said two years of 18 to two years 18 months to two years of permitting. and then they got held up on just by the utilities yep <coughs> yeah <coughs> so trying to deal with that it's going to be a great little site you know? <coughs> it really is mm. it really is and you it's such a, a great organization that gets buy-in from the owners yeah yeah i mean you know one it, family and, left haiti after the hurricane with nothing mm -hmm. nothing mm -hmm. you know and then another one was a single mom it was a few single moms but a single mom this is her third time applying for a Habitat for Humanity oh, house. Fantastic. You know, so, you know, it's not an easy process to persevere for some of this stuff, you know? <clears throat> oh, that's fantastic. So it really nice. was, it was really amazing to be there. It really was. It's the quintessential of the American dream, right? Yeah. It, it, it really was American amazing dream. to be there. I was really glad I that's was. That's great. 
That's great. I'm glad you were you were able to go. I'm so again so disappointed that I missed it. I wish they'd focus on <clears throat> rental too because they're so good. I wish there was a rental version of the um, one thing I wanted to mention before we depart for the day. Um, I did want to just extend the committee's thanks to Donna Kalanick because she is uh, no longer on on our board. Uh -huh. um, so her last meeting was her last meeting. So I just want to thank her for her years of service uh, to the town of Harwich on the CPC as a selectman's uh, member. Um, so she, I have no doubt she will advocate uh, continue to advocate uh, before us and and on behalf of the town on housing and everything else that we do but I did want to make sure that we extended our thanks for her all of her service I will uh, say it's, it was a little disappointing to not have some public input in the areas of affordable housing and recreation since there are some major requests that come from those areas and I would have liked to have seen some you know uh, something <coughs> just in terms of needs excuse me but I understand but I do still have to say better turnout than we've had in a couple a couple of the years that I've been on this board we had one person show up at least twice and I'm, only one person at least twice which is horrifying to some degree when you consider how much money we are I know. we are um, charged with spending um, just a side note the CDP was going to come they couldn't make it and they were going to send something in writing and I said well you can but it's not something that you have to do you know by this deadline it was just mm -hmm. so they would have well I'm I was more <coughs> thinking about our so own affordable, affordable housing, housing trust and what they perceive as their needs moving forward mm -hmm. for the next year two three to five years right. well, actually, I, 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 actually I, I think this was Andrea no, the, I'm talking about yeah. our affordable well, housing Andrea trust. Andrea is the coordinator. Yeah. She was the one who wrote it. I, I just probably just associate with CDP, but. Just was, saying. Yeah, she couldn't make it. <laughs> so I don't know if she was saying it for her, for CDP or for the trust. Yeah. I frankly just looked at Andrea and went, oh, well, you can't make it. I understand. I. So I maybe we would have had somebody, but. I, I will be our continual advocate for affordable housing now however we can do it I'm all in favor of buying land and ha building habitat houses but you heard they're not building another thing for three years no. we need affordable <coughs> housing now yep. so what's and the plan I will keep saying right that and but I will we need keep to... saying we cannot afford to lose the people who cannot afford to live here so I don't so, I don't know that anybody the plan is nobody's telling us we keep I whenever I ask anybody at all involved in housing in the town I get oh yeah we're working on stuff oh the affordable housing trust has great stuff in the pipeline mm -hmm. and I get angry about that because we need affordable housing now right but even if somebody they closed on a piece of property this past week to Habitat for Humanity's point there's a whole process they have to go through so it's not it's not that nothing is happening there are they're also not our only affordable housing entity in the town so agreed it would have been I would have appreciated to hear more on the rental program and what the needs are going forward because that is also a mm -hmm. an important yeah. aspect and to something that Ginny said with regard to the affordable <clears throat> housing in fact Harwich Elementary School had five kindergarten classes this year that's pretty good so that is, yeah. you know, it's, it's that not is. that we don't have the kids in town. No. Or the young families. We need families. to keep the kids in town. Yeah, yeah, I know that. I know that. Right. But I'm saying they were five kindergarten classes. That's a lot of kindergarten classes. It is. But Chatham does not, and we're paying for Chathams. And that's we don't a whole want to different. <coughs> Those are decisions from 15, 20 years right. ago that we can't change but, tonight. But we don't want to end up like Chatham where they lose all their young families. So, I mean, Elizabeth, I are you, that, are you, are, um, I, You're a selectman's rep, right? Correct. No, I am now the new chair of the Harwich Housing Authority. So have you, have you changed and from the selectman's appointee she to She wasn't the, the selectman's I appointee. I was. The, Donna was. Donna was. And we were one. missing one. I thought, no, I no. thought. 
No, okay, she's so you housing were authority. always the housing person? She's housing I committee. Am the housing authority. Okay. Representative and housing I know housing authority, housing committee. We yep. we always historic know, planning. We've got waiting lists. Conservation Rios. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm there. I just, I don't know why I thought, mm. I thought Elizabeth was, I thought you were appointed the last time when you were appointed, I thought you were appointed as our, as a selectman's appointee and not as a housing authority appointee, so. They, for, for <clears throat> I thought the way it worked was the housing authority appointed me and that was the end of it. Nope, it but always gets confirmed by the, then confirmed then by the selectman. You have to be confirmed by the selectman, so that, we all know that very well in this so court. Clearly, I get, you know, I just got, in fact, I have to go get signed and I'm sworn in again. That's what I want you to tell but, her. Um, I want you to yeah, tell her no, what you so emailed I'm, me. I'm the housing authority, and I'm, okay. the, as, as of last Tuesday, the new chair. So I realize that. Congratulations. I, I warned them. I said, you give me the, that title, and I'm going to, yeah. <laughs> you know, I want money. I want more houses to run. Um, I mean, we have no. <coughs> we have a huge well then, waiting list so, for So, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna just go there and say you've opened the can of worms. So, it would have been great for the housing authority to, to have given us a presentation on on the rental program and and the other programs going forward because that's all. Those are all needs too. So the housing authority is an applicant. So. So we could have done that as well. So it's I, not I, always know, since just. I've been on this committee. I, I, I was always curious as to why the housing authority didn't come and ask for more money each year from us. I always wanted them to ask for more money. And the way they were set up, they explained the last time they came in that they only had the ability to handle X amount. Okay. Um, because I, they didn't want more than that at the time. Because we did ask that question. Right. I, I think. Um, I'm just starting to learn the mm -hmm. ins and outs of the housing authority. And at first I thought uh, we only got money from the state. I didn't realize we could get mm -hmm. money from here too. So then when I learned that, I did some research. We now have a wonderful woman um, who is the administrator. And she also has a wonderful assistant and they know their stuff. So um, I will have Tracy give me a request because I think they can handle, and she's told me she thinks they can handle more, at least the MRVG. <coughs> well, I mean, I'm not saying John didn't do a great job. John did a great job, and it, and I was probably on the board, it was my third year before they came forward and, and asked for money, and I was surprised that they weren't doing that every year, and I understand there was a reason behind it. At the time, they had a reason. So, well, the um, purpose of this, though, is for yes, the group or organization or whatever they represent to tell us what the needs are, and the taxpayers to tell us where they want us to spend the their needs money. Needs are, and then if they do have an application, what that application is going to address, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of the needs. Mm -hmm. And I think on a broader scale, it's also about the taxpayers telling us where they want us to spend. We never get that. The town's money. I know, and, and we Do don't. Do you need taxpayers here? I, I a couple. Well, that most taxpayers a couple. <laughs> don't Jenny. speak up until the money is actually Chris. about to be spent. Chris. And then they say, wait, why didn't I know about this? I mean, the amount of people that stand up at town meeting every year and say, why is this the first we're hearing about something we've all been working on for two years amazes me. So well, that is the you know you can lead them. That to is water. local pol That is local yeah. politics. You can so. lead them to water, but you can't make them. But I I will take responsibility for the housing authority, and I will. I will be more forthcoming and transparent. <laughs> any um, is there anything else that people wanted just, to? Just the only thing is, yeah. I noticed when I sworn in mm -hmm. several people. I think you just reminded me that you hadn't signed um, sworn in yet, but. I think there are several, a couple of us that haven't yet. I did it today. Okay. Yeah. okay. Maybe, maybe we have to be sworn in. Yes. yes. Again? Yeah. On your new appointments. Yeah. Well, I, I, you are still really sworn in under your old appointment, I, but you, but the practice in Harwich is to re, is to re swear in. So yes. 
annually? Yeah. yeah. Um, when you're when you get a letter from the selectmen. Oh yeah. So it's yeah. not saying awesome. that <coughs> saying that you have reappointed. You've been reappointed. Right. right. That's but those are three-year three appointments, though. Not always. No. Some of us no. are on the one-year no. cycle. No. One-year cycle, oh, I yeah. guess. <coughs> so that's another conversation for another evening. <laughs> on the that's cycle. That's for sure. Right. So. Um, but yes, for those of us that got letters from the selectmen, if you got a letter from the selectmen in June or July saying that you were reappointed, then you should uh, call the clerk's office, make an appointment, come in, get rescorn in again. Um, sooner rather than later. As I said, I did it this afternoon, so to make sure it was done for tonight. Okay. Um, anything else that people want to see on the agenda? <clears throat> All right. Um, I will blissfully say that David is fully expected back for our next meeting. Um, thank you all for the evening, and then I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion's been made by John, seconded by Elizabeth. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any in opposition? Hearing none, it is approved.